Human trafficking, a form of modern-day slavery, involves the illegal trade of people for exploitation or commercial gain and is a $150 billion global industry. Two-thirds of this figure is generated from commercial sexual exploitation. Nigeria remains a source, transit and destination country when it comes to human trafficking. The UN's International Organization for Migration further reports that as of April 2022, there were approximately 649,788 migrants in Libya, of which Nigerians represented approximately 5%. Now, recently, trafficked Nigerian women in Iraq begged for evacuation. This morning, our daybreak show will be centered on human trafficking. And to discuss this issue, we have in the studio Mr. Agoro Ganyu Alao, who is head of Intelligence and International Cooperation Unit, the National Agency for Prohibition of Tra Trafficking in Persons and Other Related Matters. We also have Mr. Francis Onyokwe, National Coordinator, Trauma Awareness, and resilience initiative also who joining us virtually via zoom uh, from your line adama said we have agboso bamei who is a public affairs commentator thank you so much gentlemen for joining us on daybreak uh, this morning as thank we look you. at this issue thank you very much yeah well uh let me begin by saying that recently with the sudan crisis and the needs to evacuate nigerian students who are there we saw you know, a whole lot, you know, happened as to our diplomatic ties with other African countries exactly. and our level of preparedness when it comes to responding to emergencies such as this. Uh, also, we are getting the revelation of uh, people, uh, some women in Iraq who are seeking, you know, repatriation. But in some cases, uh, it is only when emergency like this happen that you hear of people in some locations. Sometimes you don't even know. Uh, our embassy sometimes do not really have a complete data as to who and who is, you know, where uh, and all that. Let me start with you, Mr. Uh, Ganyu. Uh, what have been your experience dealing with, you know, such issues and Nigerians leaving the shores of the country, you know, in brief? Well, uh, like you said earlier, my name is Agoro Ganyu Alao, and I say to our viewers at home, good morning, and welcome to the program. The experience has, uh, in most cases, I must tell you, the experience has not has always been palatable, because most times when they are coming back, there are a lot of challenges that come with it. And don't also forget that bringing them back is also a combination of uh, partnership uh, uh, arrangement between the stakeholders, uh, we'll be talking of NEMA, sometimes maybe taking the lead, and then sometimes uh, you might also have the humanitarian affairs of which that tip is under. And then most of these evacuations, when they are coming in, we first of all had meetings and then we also discussed the strategy. We also have DITCOM sometimes also coming in. And then when they are coming in, sometimes we also need to know what are the number coming for a start. And then we also assign ourselves the task of what do you do? For us, for instance, in, in, for NAPTIP, most of my officers are always there. My counselors are always there, especially to provide psychosocial support for them when they are coming in like that. So you see it's a combination of the whole of the agency and some of the, sometimes the law enforcement agency also coming in to also be part of the, 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 the officers on ground, receiving them as they are coming in. But sometimes you don't also have adequate data. And then also, they don't also come once like that. They just come once in piecemeal. Like for instance, some of my officers that are involved in this recent one, the, 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 the plane sometimes landed by one o'clock, 12 o'clock, and they have to be there on ground. Because by the time they are coming, they have to receive them. They have to also do profiling and also see how they can provide psychosocial support for some of them right. as they are coming in. So these are some of the work that we do there. And the other agencies also have their own areas, their roles to play mm. so that as they are coming in, you have to welcome them, give them nice reception, ensure that you give them the promise that since they have come home, everything will be okay for them going forward. All right, yeah. uh, Mr. Oyekwe, it, uh, you have been working with uh, Trauma Initiative. Yeah. The question, he's talking about coming in. My question is going. The recent cry is from women in Iraq. 
who have been uh, harassed, who are not having uh, good working conditions and all of that. Uh, almost on a weekly basis, we see returnees from Libya. My question is, why do Nigerians go to these countries? Iraq is not doing well at the moment. Libya, war torn area. So some of the people that you talk to in your initiative trauma, what do they tell you is the motivation, apart from the ones we hear all the time, you know, unemployment, what is it exactly that will make you leave a country that is in uh, peaceful as it were, that's Nigeria, we don't have war, and go to that kind of place? Yeah, there are a lot of issues, there are a lot of cases, like um, uh, when you talk of unemployment, some of them go there for a greener pasture, for a better job, some of them are being coerced. They don't even know why they are going until they get there. The story changes. Some of them are lured into it. You understand? So, um, but the thing is this. Locally, we need to raise up awareness because it starts from the recruitment. Some people recruit, but they don't know they are doing the job of trafficking. Some people get involved in transporting these people. They don't know they are good doing trafficking. For example, National Union of uh, Road Transport Workers, we have carried out a lot of uh, sensitization program to them. And a lot, many of them confess that they didn't know. If you're carrying somebody, especially a teenager, know who is taking the person, know where the person is going, know what the person is going for. Because at the end of the day, you have uh, succeeded in transporting that person. You are involved also. You understand? So, but you see, when they promise them a lot of goodies, they think it's all like that. The next thing you see them traveling. And unfortunately, majority of them travel by road. Majority of them travel by road. And when they have started, going back is not easy again. So they just have to continue. So we need to do a lot. Even with this program, is part of sensitization. If every radio station, TV station, newspaper outlets will continue to Awareness. We didn't listen though, they because were, every were. week when we listen, these people coming from Libya, yeah. newsmen approach them and they talk about their ex experiences and oftentimes harrowing. Yes. Yet, the next week, you see other people on the same journey. That's what we talk about, coercing. Mm -hmm. Some of them are being coerced, some of them are being forced. Can you understand? I, and there are a lot of promises mm -hmm. that they will get better. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you get there, you will be sending dollar to your people. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants this dollar. Okay. Can but I can I come in, in a better way, uh, in a right way? All right, Mr. Ganu wants to chip okay. in. Can, can I come ahead. in there? I want to appreciate what you have said. You have actually laid bare a few of the factors. But for me, I want to also tell you that uh, this, most of these are uh, young girls and young boys going out. If you look at it, desperation is one of one of the key areas there. And then it's, uh, we also look at the areas of uh, uh, peer pressure among uh, among their their colleagues. But now, what we have also witnessed is that. In recent times, we have also observed that most of the recruitment when you come to issue of trafficking are done online. So we have a lot of social media engagement now through the WhatsApp, through the Facebook. Most of them are actually being recruited through that means now. It is no more physical contact that I will come and visit you and then talk to you. Deceit is also on the high. So we see a lot of people being deceived. When you get there, you are going to collect $500, you are going to do that. But the, the issue of Iraq comes to the mind now because in recent times during our intelligence uh, gathering and then also uh, intelligence with other uh, sister partners, the international partners, then the, 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 the UN partners, and also the law enforcement agencies, uh, we also discover now that the, the, the movement now is more towards Iraq. And then that is why uh, two weeks ago, my Director General, Professor Fatima Waziri, asked you, uh, as he, issue a press statement saying that we have high number of people now going to Iraq, especially our female guys. And it has been discovered that by the time they get to Iraq, they take them to, they go to Baghdad, they, they take them to Basra. And you now discover that majorly for domestic servitude. And most times when some of these people get there, the kind of work they do that you are calling domestic is not an easy job. You can imagine somebody that is not allowed to sleep. Somebody that works till daybreak, is, she continues to work. And they, they, if you see the kind of experience, some of them are sick, they don't get medical attention. Some of them, the moment they get there, they are, they are, their travel documents are taken away from them. Their phones are taken away from them. And then even the amount they told them they are going to be paid, is not paid. Okay. And now, if All you right. look at most of these things, 
We have, for instance, NAPTIP has been proactive. We have Regulation 2019 that talked about uh, the, the travel and tour organizations and the recruit, recruitment agents. So that regulation is undergoing a, a, a review now because we want to also make it more, the penalties there to be more, more stiffer. Okay. So, okay, we'll come back to you okay. uh, in the studio. Let's uh, go to Dr. Agboso Bamei, uh, who is a virtual, uh, joining us from Yola. Doctor, if you can hear me, uh, let's get your own take. What would be the role of family in this conversation? How will family help? Because uh, a lot of times we hear stories about some of these people going the claim is that they want to be they want to go and uh you know help you know raise money for their families thank you very much and uh, uh, good morning to our viewers well the, the family plays a very important role in all this and i think one of the reasons why we are having rising cases of uh, human trafficking is because of the breakdown of uh, family values you know, at, at all across Nigeria and the various traditions and cultures and tribes we have in Nigeria, um, a child belonged to the community 30, 40 years ago. And the, the community, the entire community, everybody elderly in the community was responsible for the child. Uh, you didn't see the, a, a child as just your personal property, but uh, everybody took care of, of, of the child. It's no longer the case now. Um, everybody is to himself now, just yourself, your immediate family. And uh, as a result of the economic challenges and, and difficulties, and we also have to mention the increase in population, we have a huge increase in, in population from independence to now over three times, uh, four times the, the population we used to have way back then. Uh, we have the same resources, little resources, huge population. And you have this struggle for resources. Uh, the economy is not doing well. As a country, we've not, we've not lived up to um, our promise over the years. And so we have a lot of economic difficulties and challenges. All these things come together and make our young people vulnerable uh, to uh, recruitment and even coercion that uh, the guests in the studio mentioned there. So yeah, if a family is working well and providing for the children, and taking care of them, um, it becomes difficult for kids from functional family, families, young people from functional families to be lured away from this. But like I said, a lot of the families are in serious difficulties. And as a result, uh, the youth, sometimes you even find the parents uh, participating. There are cases where uh, these recruiters come to the parents and promise them heaven on earth. Your children will be taken care of. Uh, you send them out there. Uh, your family will be better off. And so with the participation of the parents, uh, uh, some of these uh, young girls and young boys are trafficked. So uh, you're talking about the role of the family there. The family plays a very important role. I think the pr primary role is with the family. Okay. Unfortunately, there's a breakdown in family values. There's a breakdown in, in values in the society. Everything has been monetized. Uh, it doesn't matter how good you are. You're not respected in the society, but if you have money, you're respected. So everybody's running for money. That law for money has made it very difficult for families to really take care of their own. All right, Dr. Agoso. Uh, in Nigeria today, you see a situation where once you say you're traveling abroad, people begin to celebrate with you, even before asking where you're going to. So there's this notion that anywhere is better than Nigeria. Do you, would you, and then some persons are saying maybe the NOA is not doing enough to talk about Nigeria to the people and the potentials uh, hearing. Um, I, I, I think that uh, the... the uh, NOA is, uh, is limited. They have lots of programs, fantastic programs that will create awareness on various issues pertaining Nigeria and the issues around human trafficking. Same thing with the NAPTI. Great organizations, uh, great ideas, great laws establishing these organizations, but the financing is not there. We have to, we have to say this. The money to do the work is really not there. 
I've, I've had discussions with, with leaders of these organizations um, around here. And uh, what I hear from them is exciting. But they just don't have the resources to do the work. Each year, they come up with budgets. We want to do this. We want to do that. Budgets are approved. But allocations are not made. So they are, they are really limited. Now, going back to your question, Nigerians feel that any place is better than Nigeria. Because again, we have not lived up to the promise of Nigeria at independence. Uh, things have not worked here. And it's, it's so disheartening because it's not that we lack the potential. We have the potential, we have the resources, but we have not organized and managed ourselves very well to have the kind of output and results that will uh, make Nigerians proud of Nigeria, especially the young people, and make them want to stay here. That's why they, they feel anywhere outside Nigeria is better than Nigeria. So, but if it, it's, it's a matter of leadership and a matter of organizing ourselves very, very well. If we put our house together as a country and our economy begins to work well, we have security, law and order, I'm sure these things will naturally drop. We will still have cases, but they would naturally drop. So the situation is making Nigerians want to run out of Nigeria because they think things will be better as soon as they leave the country. Okay. Well, let's come back to the studio, Mr. Gorong, uh, to you now. Earlier on, you mentioned travel agents and, you know, the plans to, you know, monitor their operations and the rest of them. What kind of, because I believe that they play a major role. Yeah. There are agents who are making a hell of money mm -hmm. out of this system. What's the kind of collaboration that you, NAPTIP has, you know, uh, with other security agencies? in arresting, uh, possibly, this middleman that make these things possible? Thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate the question you have asked. The truth about it is that NAPTIP uh, will work with collaborative effectively with all law enforcement agencies of the federal government. We also co collaborate with international partners and then mostly UN agencies too. The truth about it is that uh, the, if you look at most of the people that are actually taken out, that are trafficked, most of them go through unregistered or unlicensed travel and tour agents. Because if you go through the registered one, they know what to do. NAPTIP has a portal where all licensed registered agents register with us. And when they register with us, if you are taking one or two persons, you must get clearance from NAPTIP. Because our client clearance from NAPTIP will show that we have been able to do due diligence, due processes, and then we have also been able to scrutinize wherever the victim is going to. The truth is that migration is right. You can't deny somebody from traveling, but you must travel the right way. When you are going for labor, you must have a license that permits you to recruit for labor in and outside Nigeria. So if you have that license, you must also register with NAPTIP as a, as, a, as a recruiter. The moment you are registered with NAPTIP, wherever you are taking out, you must get a clearance. You must clear that person with NAPTIP. And in our own, we do a lot of work by clearing them. We ensure that what kind of job is this person going to do? Is the employer a registered employer in that country? Is that country safe for that person to work? What kind of salary is that person going to get? What is the other conditions? The rest hours, the period of rest, the number of hours is going to rest. Then what is the amount of money the person is going okay, to get? If, if for any reason yeah. things turn out not to be as said or as promised, one finds himself outside the country. Is there any kind of arrangement for anybody who is willing to return back, uh, just like we've seen in the case of these uh, women in Iraq? Is there any sort of arrangement or any kind of coordinated arrangements to say, okay, well, you, for some reason, even if you didn't follow the process before you went out, you know, this has now happened. What do I do? Well, for some of them, what we, we normally do is that the moment what is promised is not given to you. You have every right to come back. 
That is, if you have gone legally, you have gotten all your clearance and everything. And then secondly, like I told you earlier, NAPTI worked closely with international agencies, especially International Organization for Migration. We have this synergy. And what we normally do is that some of them go to IOM, some of them go to Nigeria Embassy. The moment you are in Nigeria Embassy, you are surely going to be brought back home. And then you see those that go illegally, those that go through the wrong route, especially by the road, like my brother said. And especially this one happens mostly with the quack agents, those that are not registered, and those that have not done any clearance. So what we still tell them most of the time when they are stranded is that the first thing for you is, go to, is to go to Nigeria Embassy. What about country. countries where we don't have diplomatic relations, and like it's, um, it's Iraq, for okay, instance? Well, okay. Yeah, well, Francis. Yeah, um, I need, why I say I need to add voice to this is this. Um, in as much as we try not to, for these people not to leave, and they have gone, the issue of coming back, so many of them are willing to return. But I want to bet you, most of our embassies, Nigerian High Commission outside, don't treat these people the right way. Uh, let's say the fact. You understand? You'll find out that some of them will be going to the embassy, they'll be going to the embassy, there's no means of coming back. Some of them have lost their traveling documents. To give them uh, emergency traveling certificate becomes another issue. You understand? So I think the embassy have to step up that way. Again, some high commissions will tell you that they don't have the funds to repatriate anybody. And there's no provision made for you know, uh, individual repatriation, unless when they are a group, you understand? Like the case of Sudan now, this is when Nigeria moved. There are people in Libya that want to come back. There are people in Mali. There are Nigerians in Niger. I mean, uh, sorry, Mali, Burkina Faso, all those places. They want to return. Italy, they want to return. But the issue is uh, the reception at the embassy, at the High Commission. So I think the High Commission need to step up in this area because mostly most of the high commission staffs are not NAPTIP staffs. If it is possible, let there be NAPTIP staff in every high commission to provide these people. Mm. You understand? So long as you can establish the fact that they, they are Nigerians, I think they have a right to return, especially I, when they show willingness. Let me, let me also and then, okay, so on the <laughs> issue of travel agency, it's a very good plan, it's a very good arrangement. But again, I can stay in my house and obtain ticket. To travel, how do you do that? Such people. Let me let me uh, let me let me just chip in one or two things with what you have said. I, I appreciate what you have said now because, uh, like I said earlier, NAPTI work with all the law enforcement and the MDAs, the Ministry, the departments and agencies. For us, if you have a case or you have an issue, and you, you prompt us, we act promptly. Well, well, and uh, hold part on, of, hold part on, of what we do is hold this. on because yes. when I was looking into this Iraq story, yes. I found that. It didn't start today. In 2020, mm -hmm. they, were, they were Christ by some ladies. There was even one woman that was able to come back. 2020. Mm -hmm. And in 2023, Naptiv is saying, oh, we've heard that uh, people are going to Iraq. And the reason is because there was no, not a lot of attention on that route. So my question is, mm -hmm. if you say you're always prompted and you always act. Let me, let me tell you one thing. Trafficking trends as we have this week, may not be the same next week. Don't also forget that initially, they are, especially most of the West African countries, attention has always been drawn there. Because we also have most of them going to some of these countries. Libya will continue to ring bell in everybody's ears. The reason is that for Libya, that is not their destination point. It is just a stop gap for them. Their destination point, most of them, is for Europe. Now, let me come back to your question. You remember that there was a time Iran was reigning. Now we are having, because most of these things, like I told you earlier, we work with most of this law enforcement. We work closely with National Intelligence Agency, Office of the National Security Advisor. We work very closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That was why I was telling you that the moment we get some of this prompt, we act. Yes, es but, but you work closely with all these organizations mm. that you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. What's the spread of NAPTIB? What? How spread are you? Like, well, you know, even, 
Mm. Even if, not just domestically yes. now, but yes. even internationally, yes. in some of these countries mm. that we have mentioned, does NAPTIP has a presence in those? We places? don't, and that is those are some of the challenges we have. Let NAPTIP is not at the interdiction port. I want to Let me be honest with you. Bit. We are not at the at the seaport. We are not at the airport. We are not at the border post. And this is part of what the agency is working on now. Because if we are in the embassies, to be honest with you, the moment if a, a survivor if a, or a victim comes in. It is our own job. We know what to do. And then we also know what to tell the embassy. Worst case scenario, if you don't have your document, it is there. We go on, like, all out. And then most of, I mean, most of these countries okay. too, we also have let me, NGOs. Let me, let me that tell we you something. Mm -hmm. NAPTIP is a very good organization. In fact, when you look at uh, Africa or West Africa, mm -hmm. it's only Nigeria that have this agency. You understand? But the truth of the matter is that NAPTIP is handicapped financially. They can't do more. For example, we talked about their presence in the seaport, in the airport, in uh, the embassies. It, uh, it has to go through National Assembly and things like that for them to pass it, for them to start. And they need to, you know, they well, need to well, be budget for NAPTIP to respond, you know, uh, 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 actively when there, such cases arise. All, all agencies in the you country, understand? when issues come yeah, up, we always it. talk about uh, inadequate funding. Exactly. It's a problem. <laughs> but, uh, it's good like to create to, agencies, but fund them so that I they like do the to, work. I'd like us to talk to Dr. Agoso. Uh, doctor, in one of the women that came in from Iraq in 2020 said that the agent paid her mother 250,000 naira at that point. What do you think can be done to these parents who are like in the forefront of pushing their children out? Because some of these uh, we, uh, girls, young girls that go abroad is the parents that are actually, in, in her case, in that uh, lady's case, it was her parents that looked for the agent, talked to the agent, and then got money from the agent and then shipped her off. That's what I said earlier on, you know, a lot of this trafficking is done with the participation of the parents. They take money from the recruiters, from the traffickers, and encourage their children, in some cases even push their children to do it. It goes back to what I said earlier also, that there's a lot of poverty in the land. And if you feel like, like uh, you're going to make money out of this, and based on the promise you have received, your child is going to have a better life, why not make the money and, and send the child? That's the thinking. The other thing that I, I need to point to, which is, uh, which is very important, is that, uh, yeah, we agree there's poverty in the land, but not all parents are doing this. The, the trouble is that we have thrown away our values, our traditional values, our cultural values, and also our religious values. We do not value human life anymore. All we want is money. A young man can leave his village and travel to Abuja and return after two years with, with billions of naira. No, he will get chieftaincy titles, he will get honors, his office will be filled up with plaques, and nobody will ask, how did he get uh, that money in, in, just, in just two years? So we, we have a lot, of, a lot of challenges here um, that we need to look into okay, uh, uh, as far as the society is concerned. Okay, we doctor, have to talk to uh, ourselves. Because and begin to value to that, human beings I'm and achievement Hello, based on doing the right thing than just money. You know, money, 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 everywhere. And uh, that's the reason why we have all these problems. Because everybody wants to make money. It doesn't matter how they make the money. The parents want to make money. Children want to make the money. And when somebody comes and gives them a promise, okay, doctor. then if we take you out uh, there... You're uh, going to make money, you will take care of your parents and, and promise the parents a little money, uh, they receive it. My point is this, there are lots of parents who are training their children properly, who are keeping their children, encouraging their children to do the right thing, and eventually these children turn well. So parents have got to talk to themselves okay. to do the right thing so that their children will turn well eventually. Don't uh, rush to get money or make money and destroy the lives of your children. Okay, doctor, uh, a, lot, a lot really about money, money, and still talking about money. Uh, this time around, talking about the attention that our embassies overseas have received uh, in terms of responding to such issues. How well do you think we have done? Uh, because a lot of times we have this, hear these complaints about you know, lack of funding and the rest of them. We don't hear government act you know, uh, in a proactive manner rather reactive manner, mostly in emergencies. That's when we see government reaction 
in terms of evacuating people who are stranded outside. But in terms of, you know, uh, individual cases where people get stranded outside the country, how prepared are our embassies abroad to respond? Uh, we're, we're not prepared at all. If I sit here and say we're prepared, I'll, be, I'll just be talking. I wish we were prepared, but we're not. Our response is always very bad, very poor. Uh, sometimes, um, like in Sudan now, it's after other countries have, have started uh, responding and reacting. Smaller African countries that are not as rich as we are, uh, that we, we then come in late and our reaction is always very shabby. We're not organized at all. You know, I, I tell people Nigeria is a great idea on potential. We've got potential more than any other country on the African continent. Our potential is such that we can be one of the 10 top countries in the whole world. We've also got intelligent people. We've got ideas on paper. You know, our educational system, the idea behind it is great. Our problem has always been execution. Okay. And two issues well, here. Okay, thank you. One is, is money. Uh, all right, you thank know, you, doctor. We, we hardly release enough money for this work to be done. Okay, the second thing is, me... is personal greed. You okay. release the money, the leaders embezzle it. So as, as, as soon as we deal with those issues, we can put our house together, and Nigeria will do greatly as far as these things are concerned. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Quickly, let me come back to the studio as we wrap up the discussion. Dr. Agoso. What's the plan now in regards to the women in Iraq who are calling for their evacuation? What's the plan? What do we expect from NAPTIP? Well, from NAPTIP, we have uh, commenced uh, strategizing with uh, the other law enforcement agencies and then uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, the NIA and then the others. And then we have also, in the course of our intelligence and also in the course of our investigation, we have also discovered that there are some couple of collaborators that uh, are here. We and have timelines. And that are there. Well, you know, it's a government thing, and it's not something that NAPTI will do all alone. In all of this, you know, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has to also be involved, and then the, the NIA and the others that are in, uh, in those uh, countries. So it's not something that NAPTI will wake up today and tell you it's tomorrow, no. We have to also, but we have commenced uh, actions on it, and then we're also looking at, looking at those uh, identified perpetrators here and those uh, at the other end. And then that is for now, that's the way to go. Because okay. un until we are able to sort all of that out, we will now be able to now move in and see what can be done to, 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 to assist some of them to come back home. All right. All right, thank you so much uh, for your perspective, for joining us. Some, uh, Mr. Francis, uh, thank you. Unfortunately, well, we won't be able to give you time to say a thing or two. Thank you for joining us on uh, Daybreak uh, this morning. Francis Onyokwe is the National Coordinator, Trauma Awareness and Resilience Initiative, and he's also been joined uh, by the uh, Head of Intelligence and Trafficking, in, uh, Head of Intelligence, yes, uh, and International Cooperation Unit of the Trafficking in Persons and Other Related Matters, NAPTIV. Also, we have Dr. Agoso uh, Bame, who is a public affairs commentator, joining us from Yola in Adamaste. Thank you so much. We look forward to having you again. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah.